told us the truck was in Hayward. And they told us they were unloading the truck in Hayward. And then all of a sudden, 10 minutes later after they unloaded the other stuff, the truck that was in Hayward pulled around the corner. Traffic time right now. Hey! Come on, man. You already, you already disrespected, man. Don't disrespect our stuff. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Greens Experience. So it's been a while. Yeah. Um, we are in Texas. Yeah. And um, as you probably can see behind us, <laughs> we still have boxes. So we're still unpacking and trying to um, get everything, I guess, more or less put away. Yeah. Um, if you've moved in before. Place. Yeah, in place. If you move before, you know that moving is no joke. And then and you moving from a different state. And yes. Coming yes. back and forth still a little bit. Yes, so it has its challenges. So, um, so ignore the boxes in the background, but that's the reason why they're still there. But we wanted to come and finally um, share with you. I know that we had hinted on our um, drive from California to Dallas Correct. about the experience we had with the moving company that we hired. As well as the shorts and on the Instagram too. Yes, yeah. yes. So I think there were a few shorts posted. Yes, they were. And um, so finally we have um, an opportunity to sit down with you and give you the details or I guess the rundown of what transpired. Right. So huh. to start and, it off. And as you saw in the previous clip, right? Yes, <laughs> that was a little bit of the drama right. that um, happened. And we're going to be completely transparent, right. okay? We're going to share with you the 10 red flags to look out for if yep. you decide to hire a moving company. I can, I think Pierre would agree with yeah. me that I don't think we'll ever hire a moving company again. I don't want to say never, but then based on our experience, yeah. I don't know if I would trust another company. Right. I mean, so, that's pretty much it. Right. So let's get into the uh, episode. Yes. And then, yes. So we'll coming back right back to you with 10 red flags dealing with a moving company. So we're back here. We're going to start with the um, the ten uh, moving company red flags. So um, first, you want to realize that the moving industry is not um, state or federally regulated. This is not one of the red flags. This is just something that we found out doing our um, our post research. Um, so that's something that you want to understand. It's not state or federally. Regulated, they do have to have like a DOT situation. Um, that's for the driving, but it's not um, the industry itself is not regulated. And um, asking if it's a third party does not guarantee um, whether it's a third party or not. They have they word inside the contracts very um, slickly, or what's a better word? Uh, they disguise yeah, in the they contract, disguise in the contract whether they're a third party or yeah, not. And and this is is very it's a very discreet way that they do it. They they basically say that if they need to use or um they'll hint like um staffing or whatever, then they may, but you know, so that's something that you wanna um wanna um think about. But first uh, red flag is um if they don't come and look at your items, that is a red flag. Because over the phone, they will tell you, give us an itemized list, um, tell us what you, what you have, um, give us a box count. We did all of those things. And because they never came and looked at our items, it was a situation to where, you know, there's a gray area there. So when they showed up and, and tried to um, basically inflate the price, we gave them everything twice. So the first list that we gave them was the initial list. And we talk with them, and obviously people add things as they're packing and different things, so it made sense. It was a yeah. situation like, okay, they told us they would, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 
they told us that we would call them or we would they would contact us a week before and then we would update the list which is what we did we yes. were very um honest with the things that we had um especially on the second go around the first time we um, estimated and then the second time we did a visual count of the boxes at the second location and um, as far as, as the first location too um, we did a visual of ourselves but they never came so if they don't come and look at your stuff that's a red flag because how are they going to make an assessment on how to charge you if they don't know exactly what you have correct okay, okay. So, um, and if you're wondering, we have a list here, so that's what we okay. keep looking down at. Yeah. Um, number two is if they ask you to sign a new or updated charge approval. Yeah. So um, one of the things you want to be mindful of is read your contract. Right. That's the most important thing. Read your contract. Thoroughly. Understand yes, thoroughly. Understand what your con what they're saying in the contract, and if you need assistance in understanding certain verbiage, get that assistance. Yeah. Um, in our experience with the moving company we hired, a lot of their wording was very deceptive. Right. And when you look at it, when you're reading through it initially, you don't, you may miss some things. Yeah, and so yeah. that is essentially what happened to us. Reading right. through it, it was like, okay, this sounds reasonable. But when we really looked and dived into it, there was right. a lot of deceptive and deceiving verbiage. And right. I believe these moving companies, they know what they're doing. Oh, definitely. They know what definitely. they're doing. The way they um, write these contracts, it's solely to get over. They're right. trying to do that. And okay. you can't tell me otherwise. Right. Um, so... Be mindful of if they have you sign a new contract because the new contract may right. be different than the original contract. They may add certain things. Yeah. Um, with our particular moving company, it was like a website link they would send you. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you experience that, make sure that you have a way of screenshotting it or emailing right. the contract to yourself right. because usually once everything's said and done, you no longer have access to mm -hmm. that link. It's like expired, yeah. so you can't right. even reference um, what they originally <laughs> send you. So make sure that you either make copies of it, print it out, right. email it to yourself, screenshot it at the okay. time right. so that you don't, um, you have that for your proof. Right. So um, just to piggyback on what she's saying, also on the day of. So what they tried to do with us is they, they loaded our stuff on one truck, and we'll get into that further um, in, in the video. But they loaded our stuff on one truck, and then we were at our second location. So what they tried to do is they tried, once they finally, once they finished loading all of our belongings, mm -hmm. they tried to get us to sign a second contract. Yes. Now, because we had already signed the first contract, we were definitely skeptic, like, wait a minute, what's the second contract? Well, the second contract was the inflated price. Yes. So if we would have signed that second contract, not paying attention, then we would have been signing for the higher amount. Correct. And it was, you know, it was an $11,000 and some change difference. So, of course, we didn't sign it. If we would have signed that, we would have been locked in to that amount. And that was a final contract. So we had only signed the deposit contract. Mm -hmm. We hadn't signed the final contract. And it was a blessing that we didn't because we could be in a situation where they're trying to litigate and get money out of us um, for something that they didn't even do. Exactly. Um, so we'll go to number three. Um, if they show up with a smaller truck than what you asked for, that's a red flag. Um, so obviously, when they show up, they should have the proper equipment. We told them a 26-foot truck. Correct. They showed up with... A uh, box truck. It was a 15-foot... Box truck. Box truck. Um, and make which, sure the truck... I'm sorry, not to interrupt you. Yeah. Most importantly, make sure it is a legit truck. Right. Like, if the mover moving company does not have their own truck that has, like, moving company, but they show up with... A white box truck with some stickers on it trying yeah. to spell out that that's the moving company and small on the door or they show up in a U-Haul truck you can rent your own U-Haul truck so make sure that the truck they show up is actually a legit moving company and they're representing that company on the truck right. so go ahead I'm sorry okay um, so yeah that's that's one of the things if they show up with a smaller truck that's a red flag so we'll go to number four uh, if they charge Oh, if, oh they if they change, change the way they price, for instance, go from one item checklist to cubic feet. So, right. yes. So when we originally um, 
made uh, when we originally agreed on the original contract with the moving company everything was based on an itemized list right. uh itemized list so the items we told them we had the amount of boxes the amount of bins um furniture right. and things of that nature we provided an itemized count so how many boxes we have how many bins we have um furniture pieces mm -hmm. and everything like that yeah. now that was how the contract that's the contract we signed right. was based on the itemized list right. however the one in the end that they tried to get us to sign changed to how many cubic feet we actually took up on the truck yeah. so it's like how do you and measure so, and determine the cubic feet right. that you take up the issue that we had was the amount they were trying to tell us they couldn't justify it. Right. It was based on an it eyeball. There was no way to justify it. Yeah, it was no way to justify it. It was an eyeball. No one, and they never pulled out a measuring tape or anything to say this is how much cubic feet. It was just, uh, oh, we know how big the trucks are, and so this is how much space you took based on the eyeball. Okay, I'm not going to pay you based on an eyeball. I right. need actual measurements, and that's what they <laughs> refused to provide. Right. They never broke out a measuring tape. No. They never... They weren't even packing the stuff to fill up the space based on a cubic metrics. You know what I'm saying? Correct. They're, they're just, you know, they were packing items, but we're, we're going to get into that further down the line as far as like how they were packing different things. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, if they go from a different standard from cubic inches to, oh, now we're, or, or from an itemized checklist, or you can even ask that, like, how do you measure out the space correct um will you st will we do an itemized checklist only or will we change to um a, a different measurement uh, matrix or whatever uh, or standard i should say let's see um so number five. five so uh, if they give you multiple uh points of contact mm -hmm. uh especially on the day of you know it's more or less one of those good cop bad cop type situations Keep in mind, they all know each other. Yes. They, it's, it, even if it's a third party, they had to contact the third party. So they have made contact. They have been communicating behind the scenes. They have worked on this scheme to get you to pay them more already. So um, you're just going to be finding out, of it, finding out what they've been doing on the day of. They're not going to tell you, oh, we're going to possibly charge you more because we know that this is what happens or whatever. However, they think about it. You know, they're going to work on their plan and then execute their plan. And if you sign or you go along with their plan, you will be paying significantly more than they charged you in the beginning. Correct. There's no way around yes. that. Because um, yes. they're trying to gouge you. I mean, it was a point to where we were, um, they tried to negotiate down. So my thing is, if there was so much room, why would you inflate the price, you know, 11 grand? Yeah. But we'll get into that further down. Let's see. Let's go on with the checklist. Number six, six is if they say anything about calling the police before you or in general. Right. And this is weird, but yes. it happens. So um, <laughs> we're going to, after we do the 10 top list, we'll go into exactly what happened. Yeah. Um, but there was a point in time where our items were loaded. They tried to pass on an inflated price or yeah. cost, and um, we refused to pay that because yeah. they couldn't justify it. It just didn't make sense. Yeah. And at that point, we knew we were being scammed. Yeah. Um, well, even before then, the, um, the lead guy in the moving team, he made mention, well, if you're going to call the police something, something, whatever he said. And I was like, call no the police? Ain't nobody calling the police. Calling what are you talking about? Yeah. So, but he, see, she was on the phone. And we'll, we'll get into this a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was she on the was phone on the with phone. the corporate So he company. didn't know exactly what was going on. I went inside to check to see what was going on. And when I came out, I guess he was trying to read what the situation was. And he said something about calling the police. But that's the last thing from my mind. But it, what it is is that pretty much what that was an indication of is that they know how this right. goes. They know. They do exactly. this to other people, and mm -hmm. it gets to the point where law enforcement has to be involved. Right. So they already know what's coming. So that is a definite um, indicator. Yes, that's an indicator. It's like mm -hmm. as if they want you to call, but right. it's, I mean, for us, you know, we'll get into the details, but when we did have to call law enforcement because they refused to um, give us our belongings back. And 
it just, you know, it's one of those things where it's a scam. It's a right. scam. And they have this, it's almost like they have a skit. And exactly. they, they go through like this. That, yeah, it's at, like they a have a skit point, and they know. Noticeable. And then, you know, um, so yes. Yeah, so the guy referenced calling the police when we <laughs> hadn't even mentioned that or even thought about right. that. It was the furthest um, thing from yeah, my mind at that point. Exactly. I Mine's thought we too. were still ironing out the, you know, the final little details. It wasn't even a situation to where... Um, it had escalated at that point. But, you know, I think, you know, like she said, he it was a skit. He went off skit because he didn't know. I think, um, no, actually, I think what it is is they're so used to scamming people and doing people this way, they know what's coming. Right. The people that they know they play these games, and mm -hmm. so people are forced to bring in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So they know what's coming. They know right. what to expect. And so clearly he knew that at some point in time, law enforcement was going to be involved. Yeah. And so it was like as if he was saying, you know, call the police. We already know how this is going to go. Well, why do this to people? Why right. waste law enforcement's time? Right. Because obviously they have better things to do, like right. fight crime, as opposed to dealing with a crooked moving company. Right. I mean, come on, let's just be real. But in the end, unfortunately, that's we had to get law enforcement involved. Okay. Um, seven. Um, number seven is... Kind if, of hinted, hinted okay, if they pull bit. up in a truck with no company logo. Right. So I mentioned this earlier. Yes. I right. mean, if it does not look like it's a legit moving truck, right. don't go well, with it. We're not them. talking about a mag. If they pull up with a magnet, that's still a red flag. If you got a magnet on a big old box truck, yes. it's still a red flag. Now, what they tried to tell us was they had to use this truck. They had the other truck out at another job. And this will be, this is seven and eight, by the way, um, red flag seven and eight. So then they sent in another truck, which wind up being a U-Haul truck. And we have and it's like, um, come on now, and, a U-Haul truck? Yeah, we have video yeah. of the truck that they had. So it was like, you know, when they sold us the job, they said it wasn't a third party. This is These are their trucks. They're going to send out their guys and this, that, and the third. But on the actual day, obviously, when you're on the day of the move, you're expecting to be able to move your things. Mm -hmm. So when they show up, it's like, okay. It didn't seem like a, a red flag initially, but it became a red flag because um, obviously, you know, we, you know, we seen that, okay, this is not a, um, a company that has their stuff together to say the least. But, exactly. So, so, yeah. So that was seven. Seven is if they pull up in a truck with no logos. Eight is if they pull up with the U-Haul, we'll, we'll get um, more detailed on those two um, specifically later. Number, Number nine, nine is if they tell you they will unload your belongings at a separate location and then transport it. Yeah. So in our situation, um, they is, showed up yeah, this is a with one. basically two trucks. Mm -hmm. So they showed up initially with a box truck that mm -hmm. was much smaller than what they had promised us. Right. Um, we called it out from the beginning, like right. before they even got out the truck. It was like, why are you coming here with this small truck? This is not what you right. said you were coming with. Um, we got on the phone with corporate. Corporate tried to play it as if, oh, they're not supposed to show up in that truck. I don't understand what they're doing. Right. So they all um, know. They right? all know each other. They knew what they were doing. But right. here's the plot twist. They show up in the smaller truck so that they can take half of your belongings because they know your belongings aren't going to fit in that one truck. Right. They take your belongings away to make you feel like you're forced to have to go with them because now your belongings, your part of your belongings are gone. Then they turn around and they show up with the size truck that you're supposed to have, load up the rest of your belongings, inflate the price, and then they tell you, oh, your items have already been sent to a warehouse where they then say they offload the truck into mm -hmm. a pod. Right. And then that pod is what goes on the semi that yeah. then delivers your items to whatever state you're going to. And, and so let me jump in real quick because I don't want to miss this point. The fact that they're telling you that they're going to load your stuff, unload your stuff, and load your stuff again, we don't pay. My, my, idea, my thing was... I'm not going to pay extra because you decide to do the job a certain way. Yes. Like, you're not going to charge me because you unload, load, load, unload, then load again, right? And you store in our stuff. That's what's baked into the price as far as I'm concerned, the original price that they gave us. So my thing was like, on top of that, it's a security risk. Yes. Like, you're going to take my stuff out of the truck where I saw you put it, 
and then put it in another situation where I don't know what it is. You could go through my stuff, do whatever. So if you have sensitive items like um, file cabinets with your information in it, um, pictures that you don't want to lose. A safe a or safe, anything, anything like that. Anything like that, then they're going to be handling that outside of your visual, outside of you being able to, to see what's going on. So I wasn't cool with that anyway. And they never told us that over the phone. They never told us that mm -hmm. we're going to unload your stuff put it in the pie because if that's the case we could have got our own pie exactly like, and know. then another thing too that we don't want to leave out is the fact that one they were just loading the truck any kind of way right and then they told us i was like so how are you measuring cubic feet and you're not even um loading the truck precisely so it makes sense right. Right. and he says oh well it doesn't matter how we load it now because we'll fix that and load it the correct way right. once we get to the warehouse and load it in but the pot. But you want to charge but us, you cubic, feet charge us spot. cubic feet yeah. based on mm -hmm. not precisely loading the item. So right. quite naturally, it's going to be larger cubic feet or inflated cubic feet because yeah. of the way you're loading. So right. it's just, you know, it's different. It's games and plots and schemes that they do. Um, also, along with the whole unloading, touching your belongings. At one point in time, when they, they loaded half of our belongings mm -hmm. in one truck, the other truck, which was a 26-footer U-Haul truck right. that they showed up with. And the same one that I that we used. Exactly, <laughs> to come out here. We could have done it. Anyways, <laughs> they load up that truck. Well, quite naturally, the remaining items we have, we had was not enough to fill up that truck because they had already taken a good portion of our items right. in the other truck. So, therefore... Then they tell us they're going to do another job. So I'm yeah. like, okay, so how? What's the, where's the marker? Right. How are you going to reassure us that you're not going to mix up our items right. with another job's well, items? Let me let me jump in real quick to um, just to kind of piggyback and trying to clarify. When they brought the 26 foot truck, they told us they pulled that truck from another job. If you remember, yes. So we're thinking when they pulled up with the 26 foot truck, we're thinking. The truck that they sent, the 15-footer, is full with our stuff. They started unloading it. The supervisor actually told her that they were supposed to put everything in a 26-footer. But when they pulled up and said it came from another job, I'm already thinking, like, okay, if it came from another job, it has somebody's stuff in it. It was empty. It was empty. So they could have just did what the supervisor said and just start loading our stuff in the 26 footer yes so again in reference to what we mentioned before good cop bad cop yeah. so corporate was acting like they were the good cop and they were trying to help us and we told them not, not to use that box truck and they're supposed to take all your items off and put it on the 26 footer and they're they didn't do any of that so it was like and we told them um if you told them that, they're not listening to you because right. they're not taking the items off the small truck to put everything into that one truck. Exactly. They're not, they're supposed to, like, it was just so fake. They were right. just fronting right. and it, it, yeah, just crooks, crooked crooks. But okay. that's all right, karma's real. Okay. Anyways. So last and final red flag. Um, you, you know I mean? If the DBA changes on any of the paperwork. Right. Yes. So this is how you kind of know there's multiple entities involved, right? Okay, so from here, we're gonna jump into some clips to kind of show you exactly, cause you know, obviously it'll be easier for you to understand exactly where we're coming from when we're saying all this stuff. So we'll kind of come back with some clips and then we'll kind of commentate over those clips to kind of further explain yes. what we're doing. All right, so we'll be right back. All right, so we're at the storage here and you can kind of see a little bit um, see how they're packing. I mean, this picture is kind of indicative to how the whole day went. Um, I can't tell if this is the actual, but I think this is the U-Haul they're actually working in now. Um, so, yeah, okay, this is the first truck. So this first truck was the 15-footer, uh, the and I mean, this is just a picture that I could capture. Um, and but if we had a closer picture, they're not they're not utilizing the space. Um, and I think we do have a, a closer picture in the video to kind of show. Um, and so at this point, they're at our second location with the U-Haul truck. Now, just to give you an idea of what transpired, at this point, we refused to pay the new amount. And so it was a lot of going back and forth hours in between talking to corporate in the meantime if your amount is a bona fide and true amount 
why are you trying to negotiate? They went from almost $19,000 to $12,000. So you're going to actually drop the price $7,000. If your amount is legit, then you wouldn't try to drop the price $7,000. But here is what's going on. At this point, we're like, we're not paying that amount. The contract is voided. We want our items. This is a picture of how they offloaded the items on the right. truck. So I off mean, the truck, I mean, they they just put everything just anywhere, everywhere. You can see this is ridiculous. Why would you stack a couch like that? Um, you know. And to keep in mind, they did this after we did have to call the police. They were refusing to offload our items unless we signed that contract, which showed on their binding. So if we would have signed it, we were agreeing to that amount. We refused to. They did not decide to unpack our items until law enforcement was involved and showed up. Right. And then this is the manner in which right. they unloaded our items. Right. Things were damaged and they did not care. Right. Um, again, another picture to kind of show um, just the ridiculousness of how they went about um, unloading our stuff. And this is a box that Asia was referring to. Um, you can see how much space. It's about a foot and a half. But they're not stacking anything in there cubically. They're just throwing items in the box, mixing different items. That's a Christmas tree, you know, um, just different things. So that's how, you know, they went about loading some of our things. So just to kind of show you. And then that's also how they um, decided to leave our stuff on the side. Okay. So that gave you an idea, right. a little bit of visual. Visual, yes. Yeah. So basically, there was a lot of back and forth. Um, yeah. As I mentioned, just um, when we were kind of going over what you were looking at visually, um, they refused to take them items out of the truck. They kept saying we had to sign, we had to sign. Right. But if you don't pay attention and look at what you're signing, they had clear as they checked on their binding, binding. and it was yeah. all bold, but it was at the top. And he kept trying to go down to the bottom. And I'm right. like, no. And I looked and I'm like, this is a binding contract. If I right. sign this, then yeah. I'm going to have to, we're going to be responsible yeah. for this amount. This like money. we're not yeah. going to pay you this amount. And then here's right. the kicker. Now we're not even dealing with Rapid Moving Company. Now we're dealing with Hermes Moving Company, which is supposedly different. So this guy, um, they one point they're not they're the same. They are Rapid Moving Company. Then they all of a sudden become oh we're not Rapid we're Hermes Moving Company. And the revised estimate or invoice that they tried to have assigned said Hermes Moving Company. So now this is the third company. And we're dealing with there. He's getting his supervisor on the phone. I'm like, wait a minute, no. If no. you're not with Cal State Moving and Company, who we originally signed with, or Rapid Moving Company, who's supposed to be the one that moves cross country, then we don't have anything to discuss with you. Right. We don't have a contract with Hermes Moving Company. We don't know who you are. You're supposed to be part of the other company. At least that's what corporate told us. Of right. part of Cal State and Rapid, but now you're trying to negotiate and do all this. So right. clearly. It was a broker situation, and they kept telling us it wasn't, but it was. Right. They went from the almost 19000 so 18000 and some change. And see, they the deal, the contracts weren't signed by me. Of course, we both agreed, you know, out of our, our own discussion. But um, the contracts weren't signed by me. So then they tried to negotiate with me. And just as a point of let me see what's really going on, I started to negotiate. But mind you, I'm not under contract. Asia is under contract technically, um, but we're both in this situation together. So when they started to try to negotiate with me, they don't know that they don't know who I am or you know how I think or whatever. So I started playing the game. Why are we playing? Because this is after five, six hours. Yes. Right. So at this point, I'm like, okay. So yeah, let's let's um, let's see if we can make it work at around you know twelve thousand. I'm just trying to see where's the wiggle room, where's the gap. They agreed to twelve thousand. So you mean to tell me you were upcharging us seven thousand dollars? Exactly. So at that point, yeah. it was even more of a situation to where it's like it you was know evident. What? It was fraud. Take our stuff off scam. the truck. Y'all playing games, and we not here for that. We you know. So yeah. So then they kept saying that we were making them miss another job. Yeah. And all so that, all man. that. But the fact of the matter is, is this okay? Um, they refused to take the stuff off the truck. Um, right. The 
address on the truck was the storage company, the storage that we had. Mm -hmm. They refused to take the items um, back to the storage, and they refused to offload the items inside the garage where they had got the items out of. So they said the only place they would offload them is in the driveway. Mind you, the only way they did that, because... Then at this point, the law enforcement had to be called. So I called non-emergency police, and they sent two officers out there. Immediately, the officers identified that what they were doing was not right. Right. Um, Actually, to be totally honest with you, officers were getting frustrated with them because they weren't being forthcoming with their information. Um, The officers basically told them they could not hold our items hostage. They had to offload them. The officer did say that this was not a criminal matter. It was a civil matter, so we would have to take them to— It was was civil— As long as they unloaded our stuff. Yes. And so they began to unload it. And so that is what you saw was how the manner in which they were unloading our items. Um, All the while, we still don't know where that other truck is with our belongings. So the officer asked them because we provided information. We both provided information to the officer. Like, there's a whole nother truck. Um, We don't know where it is. The officer asked them, like, okay, where's the other truck? Where's the rest of their belongings? They told the officer it was in Hayward. And the officer said, okay, so when are you going to give them those items? You can't keep them. You have to give it to them. They told the officer, we'll drop it off sometime during the night in the driveway. What? You going to drop our stuff off sometime in the night in the driveway? No, that's not okay. So the officer was like, okay, well, can you give a time? So they told the officer 11 o'clock at night. Right. Like, just evil. So anyways, um, the officer tells us like you know at this point it's nothing we can do they're offloading your items but should you have a problem please do not hesitate to call back he also said that and told them as well that they are not allowed to offload on the sidewalk or the street and if they do they can be ticketed so then the two officers call me back if they put anything on the sidewalk or in the street you know i'll come back and give them a citation because you know they they can't do that they can't do that So the officers leave. It was two cops. The police officers leave, and then they just got reckless with it. When the, first of all, after the officer leaves, not even ten minutes after the officer leaves, here comes the white truck. Right. And we're the like, truck that's oh, supposed to, to be, be in Hayward. In a different and city. Oh. So where we are in proximity to where they say the truck is, you're looking at. And it was during rush hour right. time. The time by this right. time now is evening time, so it's rush hour. Right. So you're looking at at least over an hour. Mind you, they traffic. got there at nine a.m. Was it nine? 9? It was nine thirty. Nine thirty. Nine thirty a.m. By this time, it's like five o'clock, right. six o'clock in the right. evening. All these hours have passed. They've tried to negotiate with us. So here's the point I want you to understand. If you don't understand anything else. Their scheme and plot is to make you feel like you're backed in a corner right. and you have no other choice drag but to go out. with them. Right. They drag you out thinking you're just going to be like, forget it, I'll pay for it. They lead you to believe that your items are already offloaded on the first truck, which is not true. Right. And so, therefore, it makes you feel like you're stuck. Mm-hmm. And I can see a lot of people just saying, you know what, they've already un- off- unlo- they've already loaded up the first mm-hmm. truck. They've taken our items. They say it's offloaded in a warehouse. It's too late. We have no choice. We have to go forward. Let's try to that's, negotiate. Yeah. You know. But even if you don't negotiate, just understand that's not true. It's, not the case. it's never too late because right. what they're doing is illegal. Right. It's illegal. Right. It's unethical and it's not right. And see, they also thought they had us pent. They thought we closed out our storage unit. Yes, they did think we closed <laughs> out our storage They thought they had us pent in the corner and trapped. sure that we had, you know, we had some more stuff in there. We had um, additional items. So they didn't know that we made sure that we kept it open for those purposes. So when exactly. they when they tried to push it on us, they're thinking, oh, no, well, they're not going to have a place to take this stuff back to. And this is a four bedrooms house worth of stuff. Yes. Yeah. So they try to make you feel like you're stuck. You're right. not stuck. OK. If you have to get law enforcement involved, get them involved. Don't be afraid to call the police because in the end. They cannot steal your stuff. And if they leave that, if you don't sign those papers and they leave with your items on that truck, it becomes criminal because now they've stolen your items. They know that. But oftentimes you don't know that as a consumer or as a customer. So understand that you can refuse to sign the papers. Right. 
And they cannot leave with your stuff without that signature. Right. Because at that point, they've stolen they your stole. stuff if they drive away with your belongings without your signature. So don't agree to anything if you're not comfortable. Definitely don't sign anything if you're not comfortable. Right. And let law enforcement tell them that they have to, or better yet, wait them out. Wait right. them out. And they'll get tired and just start off loading it. Right. So needless to say, that's what happened. They did that. They start off loading our things. Ten minutes after the officer leaves, here comes the white truck. And guess what? It was never offloaded. Right. It was still exactly the same way right. it was when it left the storage at 10 something that morning. Right. So everything was a lie. And so keep in mind, our children were riding around the neighborhood with neighborhood kids on their bicycles playing outside. And they said they saw the white truck around the corner, around the corner. waiting for right. the police officers to leave. So the white truck was already, it had never it was, gone to It had Hayward. never left. It never left and went to Sacramento area. or yeah. any other places they said. They tried to lead us to believe that at that point it was too late, our items were already offloaded, so we had to go with them. That was a lie. Right. So needless to say, um, not to make this video super long um, or longer than it already is, we have all of our belongings, mm -hmm. and if you've been following along, you know that we decided to just rent our own U-Haul truck and drive our own items out here to Texas, which, thank God, was successful on our part. But yeah. um, in dealing with that moving company and the way they were offloading some of our items, we did um, sustain damage. Right. I have some things that were broken. Right. Um, our son's... Um but, yeah, so some things, up, yeah, so there was places. quite a few things that was damaged. Yeah. Now, here's the unfortunate thing. You're probably wondering, so what happened? Right. What they ghosted the, us. Yeah. They've ghosted us. Um, we've left several calls. They have this dummy email address that they say, like, you can email if there's any issues. I've emailed and I never received a response. I've called various numbers, mm -hmm. every number I call there's nothing. Right. So it's like as if they fell off the face of the earth. Now right. you're probably wondering, have we got our deposit back? No, we nope. have not. Nope. So we've contacted our bank. Um, that is something that still we're waiting on. Um, but like I said, it's an unfortunate situation. Um, how do I feel about it? I want our money back. Um, I definitely want some, um, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, needless to say, um, it's very upsetting. It's right. um, been a very, for me, I would say a, it's just, it's, it's upsetting. I mean, there's no other way to put it. It's upsetting. It's frustrating. Um, a lot of anger and a lot of trying to figure out how could you, you know, how could we, or I even speak it for me, how could I have missed some of these things? I feel like I'm pretty good at, you know, yeah. being able to recognize things that, you know, intuition or red flags. It, clearly, I miss quite a bit with this company. Um, and if you're wanting to know deposit wise, we are out. A, 27. Yeah, 2758 um, is mm -hmm. the exact amount. $2,758 right. is what we pay for a deposit that we have not gotten back. I don't know if we will get it back. Yeah. Um, but the blessing in of it all is that we have our belongings. Yes. If you've ever um, looked into some of the stories of people who've hired moving companies, there are people out there who never received they never their belongings. Got their stuff back. They never they, got their stuff. So how that part of it works? Um, sometimes they'll put your stuff in a storage unit, and then it's up to you to find your storage unit. Um, They'll have your stuff in their supposed warehouse location, um, which is not really somewhere that they plan on staying for a long time. Mm -hmm. So then they'll lose the lease or something like that will happen, or they'll have to change the business name, business address, and they'll just leave everything there. Because mind you, at this point, they've already gotten your deposit. So they got paid for nothing for doing nothing. Basically. So um, the only money that they're out is really the gas and the manpower to get your stuff from one place to the other. And I'm sure that that cost is already baked in with those deposit numbers. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, it's definitely one of those things to where, you know, paying attention um, to any of the red flags up front is better than seeing them in real time. And then also understand that, um, you know, if you've never done this before, um, just 
vet all of these different scenarios because yes. we wind up going with doing it ourselves. And um, maybe you have somebody that can do a long drive, or maybe you have somebody that can help you with the moving part and it can cut you some costs. You know, this yeah. is one of those times where reaching out to your family and friend resources might be more beneficial than just trying to um, do it on your own. Now, as far as us, you know, we did the trip, um, made it. I've, I have moved several times before throughout my life. So for me, it wasn't really a major issue. But if you haven't moved before, if, you ha if, you're, not really, um, if you're not really knowledgeable on how to pack things, I used to work in uh, the shipping industry. So I kind of know how to pack a truck. Um, we'll put some, I'll put some pictures or video to show you how, if you see a moving company not packing your stuff this way, then you know they're trying to gouge you on the price because they're leaving a lot of air gaps, space gaps, and um, different things to where, if, why would you put square items in a box? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a larger box that's going to take up more space. And um, the box that we showed you the clip of, that was like, oh, oh we don't have any more in here anymore. But yeah. that's like maybe a... Um, three and a half, almost four foot high box. Yeah. So yeah, yes. you're going to take up a lot of yep. space, but um, ultimately, you know, we got through it. Um, you know, it's something that we learn together, you know, different things. I also, um, there's some other resources that I'll um, add into the, uh, that we'll add to the, um, the comment, not the comments, the description. We'll description, put in the description yeah. links and different things to, um, to kind of give you guys a heads up. So, yes. So um, that's the story. That's our story of what happened with us dealing with the moving company. So stay away from Cal State Moving and Storage, yeah. Rapid Moving and Storage, and Hermes Moving Company or Moving yeah. and Storage. Stay away from them. And I want to add. And too. they say they're based in LA, but as we know, it's yeah. not hard to get a PO box that right. is actually an address, and so. Right. We really don't know if that's even legitimate, honestly, at this point. Um, the people we talked to clearly were crooks. This is what they do. They scam right. and fraud people. They take your money. But we believe in the end, you reap what you sow. Right. And they're going to get theirs. Right. And another thing is, too, um, we I kind of felt comfortable seeing as though I've dealt with transport on cars, right? Two totally different things. Two totally different things. I recently dealt with a hard transportation company. Everything went through well. Um, that's not to say that there aren't situations in the car transport companies that um, that could could you know rub you the wrong way or end in a in a bad situation. But um, they're two different things. So if you dealt with car transport and it, you're kind of comfortable, you're thinking, okay, well, it might be the same. It's not. It's not the same. Um, mm -hmm. Two different. I mean, same is transportation, but it's two different parts of the industry, um, yes. segments of the industry. So. And let me clarify, because the Internet can be a piece of work and you never know who this video may um, come across or who may come across it. When I say they're not they're going to get theirs, I'm not saying we're threatened. We go do oh, anything. No. 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 So let me clarify. I'm talking about karma. Right. I'm talking about right. the fact that at some point, somewhere somewhere, um, what goes around comes around. Right. And so that's what I'm referencing. Not saying I don't want anyone, if anything gets to them, we've dropped names of the company. We didn't drop names of the individuals, right. but at this point I'm ready to, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, I don't even names, know if they were the real names. Look, names, true, because names and numbers, right. oh, I'm ready to give it to y'all. Right. So y'all can look and inundate them. But anyways, right. no, but on the real list, I'm just going to be honest. I just want to make sure I clarify. Right. When I say they're going to get theirs, where it's not a threat, it's right. not saying we're going to do anything. We're just saying that as the world turns at right. some point in time, the energy gonna come back that energy is going to come back right. to them. Because when you do people wrong deliberately right. and on purpose and you scam people no somewhere knows. down the line in your life, you are going to be scammed or you're going to be done you wrong. Reap what you, sow. you reap what you sow. So. OK, so that's what I'm talking about. I just right. wanted to clarify that. So that's it. That was our moving company experience. Um, so, it, I mean, at the end of the day, I always try to look for the silver lining. We got a, ro a road trip out of it. It was fun. Uh, if you seen, if you saw that uh, video episode, we yeah. did a full episode on that, right? Um, we, we did a live. 
Oh, we oh did yeah. Live. We, so we if you live. watch the live or if you go back and watch it, you can see that, um, you know, we did a, our first long haul road trip. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, we it wound up working in this working for us. There was a benefit at the end because I was able to um, we were able to, I'm sorry, yeah. to transport a car. Yes. Yeah. So we did. We got all of our belongings in a car out here. Um, so took a road trip. it worked out. It yeah, worked out I got in to the spend end. Some time with my beautiful wife on the yes, road. Yes, we have fun <laughs> on the road. We have um, fun. Stopping and getting gas and all of that. And, yeah. and, and not only and that, but it was. Scenery. Yeah, I was going to say it was good. You know, it's a lot you miss when you're in the air right, flying. Right. So we were able to see a lot of things, at least for me. Yeah. Um, I've never done a cross country trip like that in our. I guess semi cost country. We didn't go all the way from. Like, yeah, well, it's not. It's yeah, not, but, not coast to coast, um, but coast to yeah. coast. But still, I had yeah. never done anything like that um, by car. Um, so it was nice to be able to see um, places right. on so, ground level as yeah. opposed to um, just flying. So. So, anyway, so again, don't forget to like, share, yeah. subscribe right. um, to our channel. We um, are happy to kind of be back to posting. It's yeah. been a doozy trying to um, kind of get things set up and moving right. and stuff. So we've been busy with that, but expect to receive more videos, right. um, sharing some more unboxing, house most stuff. house to home stuff. Um, yeah. We've purchased quite a bit, so we want to share that with you as well. So right. also in the comments, have you experienced anything like what we experienced dealing with the moving company? Yeah. And then also, too, if you've dealt with the moving company and it was a successful experience, Let please leave it in the comments. Right. Someone may be looking for a reparable company. Right. I mean, I'm just telling you the companies to avoid. Right? Don't go to those companies right. I listed. Right. If right. you come across them on the Internet, run. Our situation yes. is our situation. Uh, yes. We want to help people to avoid what we went through. But if you can avoid it in a way where you still are able to use a transport, a moving company, good. You know, yeah. help, you know, help us help other people. If you're watching this video, to um, find a reasonable, viable resource. Yes. So if you know of a company, share that company so yeah. that, um, yeah, people yeah. might be able to use them. But as for us, we have no reference right. for you. <laughs> not uh, at this point. <laughs> not at this point. We don't know anyone right. but right. ourselves. Right. And that's not and the I, company listen, that that's not the industry we're in. No, no. I ain't moving your stuff. So don't like oh <laughs> but, I like how you pack that. Come no, really. no, no. That sis, was for us and us only. So um but yeah. So hopefully yeah. this us being transparent will be helpful for you. Okay. Right. So again, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, as well as comment and check out our Instagram page which is the greens experience on ig mm -hmm. and until next time be safe peace